Would NASCAR be a better owner of IndyCar than Roger Penske? I know it's a bit sacrilegious to even say that, to even tout the idea. And I'm sure right now Robin Miller's rolling over in his grave and RIP to the big guy. I know, I feel, I feel dirty even saying that. Because I love IndyCar. I love the Indianapolis 500. And I think it is the best kept secret in motorsport. But as it stands right now, Roger Penske and Penske Entertainment have absolutely zero, a zero amount idea on what to do with this series and how to get it to grow. How to attract a new manufacturer, if one, if not two, maybe even three. That's a pipe dream, of course. But when you look at what NASCAR has done with IMSA, there's a case to be made that NASCAR and Jim France and all the fine people over at IMSA could probably do a better job with IndyCar than what we currently have from the Penske Entertainment Group. One of the things that the Penske Entertainment Group loves to do is talk. They do a ton of talking and very little action. We would love to add another manufacturer. We're looking at adding another manufacturer. We'd love to add more ovals. We'd love to add more races. We'd love to have WEC race at uh, IMS. We'd love to have this. We'd like to do this, blah, blah, blah. We'd like to have a new chassis. We'd like to have hybrids. We'd like to have a new engine formula. And you know how much of that they've done? None, zero. They added Milwaukee. I'll give them that. They added the Nashville Super Speedway only out of pure desperation to keep an event somewhat in the vicinity of Nashville. Because it's in the state of Tennessee. There's that, I guess. But outside of that, they don't do much. IndyCar hasn't added a new manufacturer since 2012, and they lost one that same year. Of course, with the DW12, in came Chevrolet, and in came Lotus. And a lot of you don't remember the Lotus years, because IndyCar kind of avoids that, like Germany avoids a certain aspect of its time frame, as well as like the Jeff Gordon goatee era, and a few other things where you're like, that was really weird. Why did that happen? That's the Lotus era of IndyCar. They're so pathetically bad, they got parked at the Indianapolis 500, and then at the end of the season, they just bailed out because they're like, we can't ever get this done. Poor Jean Lacy had his legacy tarnished because they couldn't figure out how to go fast in a straight line. Outside of that, they added Chevrolet in 2012, and then since then, it's been crickets. In 2019, they almost added Porsche, but Porsche wanted to run a hybrid component on their cars, and IndyCar was like, nah, we're not going to do that. A month later, they were like, hey, we're going to add hybrids. What are we even doing? What are we doing here? That makes no sense. They got led down the path that Ferrari was going to join in 2021. We all knew that was never going to happen. Everybody outside of 16th and Georgetown knew it. Everybody inside 16th and Georgetown was just drinking the Kool-Aid like they were uh, part of the Jim Jones call. It makes no sense to me. They have no idea what they're doing. Meanwhile, on the IMSA side of things, NASCARs, they've attracted a bunch of manufacturers for GTP, which of course is the top category. Currently, as it stands starting at Sebring this weekend, they'll have five factory teams in there. And they all use different engines, right? You have a V6 twin turbo, you have naturally aspirated V8s, you have turbo V8s, you have a bunch of different engine options and balance of performance, you know, does equal those things out. One of the things that Michael Andretti has said, and I think a lot of people have begged for this to happen, is for IndyCar to develop a chassis that would be able to hold the EMSA GTP engine formula. Those are a bit heavier than what the current generation of the 2.2 liter IndyCar engines are, but a different redesigned chassis able to hold those would be really beneficial for everybody because now you can try to attract those same manufacturers that are in IMSA to also put that same engine formula into IndyCar. Of course, IndyCar would have to have some sort of BOP because, you know, naturally aspirated V8 versus twin turbo V8 versus a twin turbo V6 are all going to have different power ranges at different circuits. So you kind of have to make sure that they're all on the same level playing field here. But outside of that, it'd be really beneficial for the manufacturers as well. The ROI that they would see would be immense, right? Because they could use the same engine formula in both major categories. They could win the Daytona 24 as well as the Indianapolis 500 in the same year using the same power plant. They would love to have that idea. One of the reasons Honda is so upset is because they thought they would be able to use their new 2.4 liter twin turbo V6 that they're using in IMSA on the IndyCar side, or at least an iteration of that. And then when IndyCar bailed on their 2.2 liter formula, which was supposed to have a hybrid in favor of keeping their 2.2 liter formula and then slapping a hybrid on it, Honda is now like, you know, this doesn't work out for us. The ROI just doesn't make sense. And I don't blame them. That's why they're looking at NASCAR right now, which is actually lead us down a different path that we'll have to get to in a little while. But for everybody else, IndyCar just isn't getting it done underneath the Penske regime. Meanwhile, NASCAR, like I said, has built IMSA into this powerhouse where manufacturers love to go. There's 10 different manufacturers racing in the GTD category. Of course, not all of them are factory outfits, but they're all being represented there. Meanwhile, IndyCar, like I said, can attract a new manufacturer if they tried. I mean, they could, I don't even know if at this point they could pay a new manufacturer to come in. I honestly don't know if they would even be able to do that. And now you have this whole culture of fear 
around Penske Entertainment and Roger Penske where nobody in the sport wants to say anything bad. And even when they do say something good, they like don't even want their name attached to it because they just don't want to take on the repercussions and the wrath that is Penske and his uh, some outbursts from time to time that we've heard about. And all of that is just creating this unfortunate situation that we have in IndyCar. Everybody wants IndyCar to succeed. Michael Andretti was only the most outspoken one. A bunch of other owners got on calls and whatnot, but didn't necessarily want to be named. Andretti, everything he said is right. Roger Penske hasn't done much to grow IndyCar since taking it over. Did he keep the series afloat during COVID? Absolutely. Hats off to him. Has IMS become a nicer facility? Definitely. Is he good at running IndyCar? No. And that's fine. Just own the series. And now... Obviously, me saying sell to NASCAR is a bit tongue-in-cheek. That's never going to happen. There also might be a tick of a chance that you could throw in an antitrust lawsuit if that were to happen, but I don't think it actually would ever stand up. I can argue it both ways. Either way, NASCAR would never buy IndyCar. I do think they could be great stewards for the sport if they did do it. And now, me saying this is, again, sacrilegious. I would hate to see IndyCar adopt a playoff system. I absolutely hate the idea of the NASCAR playoffs, the elimination-style format. I don't like it. I would much rather have a, you know, full season championship like Formula One has. I understand the need or why NASCAR thinks they need to do that. And I can understand the justification. So, but I really hate IndyCar just struggling and I want to see it succeed. Like I said, diamond in the rough, it's the best kept secret in motorsport. And it shouldn't be because the racing is so good outside of this past weekend in St. Pete, where entertainment was on conservation mode the entire time, which again, that is part of the reason uh, there's a couple different factors that go into that. But on the IMSA side of things, right now, in IMSA, in the GTP category, you have Cadillac, you have Acura, BMW, Porsche, um, and Lamborghini starting this weekend at Sebring. Five great manufacturers. All five of them could have their power plants, already two of them. So you could have three more additional manufacturers join IndyCar if they wanted to. And then on the other side, you also have hypercar category in WEC, which runs eh, somewhat similar. Um engine specifications, you have Alpine, which is Renault, Toyota, Ferrari, and Peugeot. All of them could but theoretically have entries in the Indy 500 if the chassis could hold that type of engine. It's just going to say that I think IndyCar needs to think wider. They need to have a more progressive approach. And now we did hear from Mark Miles this past week that said that they're going to get a new chassis and new engine formula in 2027. Again, that's a reactionary move. It's never proactive. It's always reaction that we get from IndyCar. And what's that new formula going to look like? Well, we don't know yet, even though it's, you know, at this point, two and a half years out. So we'll have to wait and see that. Of course, NASCAR owns IMSA, and they've wholly owned it since basically 2012 when the American Le Mans series and Grand Am merged into one another. Adding an IndyCar right there would, like, of course, create the trifecta for NASCAR in this country. They would have the top stock car series, the top sports car series, and the top open wheel series. That might be a problem. But it could be Jim France's holy trinity, right? He's Thanos, and that's like the last rock that he might need on his finger. Again, I don't think it's going to happen. And the whole convoluted history behind sports car racing in America would have me sitting here like I'm Charlie Kelly trying to figure out who Pepe Silvia is. And I just don't have time for that right now. At the end of the day, IndyCar deserves better than what it's getting. And I think formulating a chassis that could adapt to what IMSA currently has, since it's been very successful in attracting manufacturers, while IndyCar has been the least successful out of all of them, next to NASCAR not being able to attract a new manufacturer, maybe it's time to figure out what they can do there. And I know Roger Penske and Penske Entertainment are going to do their own thing. They'll probably come out and be like, we're going to do 3.2 liter twin turbo V6s. And everybody's going to be like, what the heck are we going to do with that? So at the end of the day, it's unfortunate. IndyCar needs a new owner, not Liberty Media. Please, God, don't turn it over to Liberty Media, who's just going to turn it into likely a feeder series for Formula One. Don't sell it to... Michael Andretti's not going to buy it. His friends at Guggenheim don't seem like they're interested in owning the series. They would rather just be in Formula One. NASCAR would be a suitable buyer, but you have to find somebody that's got the cash behind it or the know-how to attract new manufacturers, but also promote the series. And right now, NASCAR's doing a pretty good job promoting itself. The Netflix show, everything else that goes behind their marketing efforts currently. Meanwhile, IndyCar's on the CW and, you know, doing the bare minimum at this point. All that to say, IndyCar does need a new owner. Unfortunately, like Marshall Pruitt said on his podcast this past week, Roger Penske, the 20th, 200 years from now, is still going to own IndyCar because now it's in the death grip of the Penske family. I don't think it's ever leaving. So 
Let me know in the comments what you think about the future of IndyCar. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHard1.